All right, I'm Colton Fleetwood, and we're here with the Oklahoma Sports Network. A coach's time out here with Coach Robert Jones. And, uh, sure. Coach, you guys just finished up uh, your Wednesday practice here. Yes, sir. You know, something that we've heard a lot throughout the season is sea depth. Yes, sir. And I know what it means, but I think it's important for people at home because they see it. It's hashtagged. That's on the uniforms and helmets. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that, what it stands for, what it means, and also talk about how your team has used that in their everyday mentality on the football field. Okay, well, it kind of started when I was in Texas. You know, I, I was a strength coach at a, a couple of different schools down there. So I was just looking for an identity for myself as a strength coach. And, you know, um, when I came to Dell City, I kind of morphed it into CDEP. We always had the pillars, but it wasn't CDEP. Mm -hmm. So I thought the best way for the kids to remember was put it in alphabetical order. And it kind of just got, it, ca it was a catch, it caught on. Um, then we tied it today. So it would go Commitment Monday, um, Discipline Tuesday, um, Effort Wednesday, Pride Thursday, and, and Toughness Friday. So we always tell them if you if you're committed to it don't matter if you're a football player, you're a student, when you get older, when you get a job, when you become a parent, you got to be committed. You got to be committed to doing whatever you you know. If you're a father, you got to be committed to being the greatest father you could be. If I'm a, a student in college, I got to be committed to that. And then once you're committed, we believe if you're disciplined in those areas and you continue to be disciplined, um, you're just going to be successful. And then you got to continue to give that effort because it's going to be some days that you don't want to come to school. It's going to be some days you don't want to be a parent. Um, it's going to be a lot of different circumstances in life that's going to push you, but you got to continue to give effort. Then once you've been committed and you're disciplined and you give effort, you start to develop and sense some pride about yourself, pride in your community, pride in who you are, pride in your family. Then once we believe you've got that pride, now you're a tough person. You know, you want to be tough. And I always tell them that football prepares you for life because um, as we get older, I'm pretty sure you guys realize that, you realize that um, life brings a lot of adversity to you. You know, what happens when your mother passes away? What happens when your best friend may get shot? You know, what happens when you go through an incident like you did at Choctaw? Yeah. Okay, so CDEP was in full effect this year for us because when we went through that incident at Choctaw, um, we were hit with adversity on all different sides. We were being blamed for it. Um, you know, people were trying leaving our school. Um, we had players straightening to leave the school. Um, so CDEP was in full effect. So that was a great lesson for these young men to understand that CDEP is not just to win football games. CDEP is to win in life and help you get through adversity and help you be a successful person. So um, it's a big thing for us. It really has uh, sparked fire. Um, and I know kids, even in college, I'll talk to some of my players at Oklahoma State, they talk about how they utilize CDEP. So um, it's something that these young men can take on to life and use it in fatherhood and use it just in life in general. Yeah, and you know, Coach, you talk a little bit about some of those old players that maybe are at the next level. Yeah. And they've accomplished a lot of cool things here, right? Yeah. But something this season happened that was really special. You guys went undefeated, and that's not happened in 30 years. Yes, sir. Um, you know, 1993, that's the year I was born. That's yeah. a long time. And so you guys are 10-0 now, actually 11-0 now, after mm -hmm. your week, uh, your first game in the playoff against Pryor. Now let's talk a little bit about that game. Mm -hmm. That game against Pryor, the game got off to a little bit of a slow start for you guys. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that and maybe is there any pressure that gets added on going into the playoffs with such a good record and maybe a lot of high expectations that maybe has oh, yeah. not been here before? Yeah, and I was just uh, on my show on the sports time, I was talking about Oklahoma State. I felt like they felt the pressure. They were 5-0. and They just had beat OU. When you're undefeated and you haven't lost, you feel that pressure. I remember my first year, we won nine in a row. I felt like we felt that pressure against Sand Springs when we got upset. It. Yeah. So I felt like at the beginning of that game, our kids felt that pressure, especially the seniors when you're facing that opportunity for your career to end in high school, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Um, and I think that the kids handled it well once they got into the game and they got comfortable. And I think they'll feel the same pressure this Friday. Um, I think, but I think once things calm down, um, I think once they realize if we just play our ball and they'll be in a good situation, but the pressure's there. You know, we've been undefeated. Um, actually, this is the first time Dell City's ever been 11-0 because even when they, the year they won the state championship, they lost the last game of the season. So they were 12-1 and when they won it. So uh, when you're doing things that's historical and things that haven't been done, there's going to be some added pressure. But it's also you need to have confidence that you're there for a reason. You're 11-0 and for a reason. So you need to be confident in what you're doing. And that pressure is going to be there regardless. You know, those butterflies are going to be there even if you were 5-5. Five and five. So I yep. tell them to try to handle the pressure correctly. Don't turn the ball over. Don't have penalties. Play hard. Give effort. And regardless of what happens Friday, it was a successful season for us. Yeah, and, and this before we get into the coming game and the quarterfinals against Guthrie, yeah. uh, a second part to that question is, you know, throughout this season, you guys have uh, taken care of business, quite frankly. Yeah. You have beaten pretty much every team you've played other than maybe uh, McAllister was, you know, they yeah. kind of made a run late. But for the most part, you've taken care of business. You won by large margins. Mm -hmm. 
So my question is, when you get into the playoffs, you haven't had a lot of tight fourth quarters with that pressure. Yeah. What do you do as a coach to make sure your team's prepared for those whenever they haven't seen them in a season? And also, how do you feel your team will handle those situations? Well, you know, what I try to do is try to anticipate our practice as much as we can. Today was a little bit of a lighter day, but Monday and Tuesday, we go full pads, we tackle to the ground. Um, we're now trying to stay up. You know, we, we lost one of our D tackles for a couple of weeks, and that's just part of the process. Because I feel like you have to, have some type of adversity throughout the season. I just feel like we hadn't had much this year. You know, we got out to good starts and we got on top of people. You know, Sapopo was a little bit shaky, but you know, that was halftime going into the fourth quarter. We had about five or six games where our starters haven't even played. So Monday and Tuesday, we really amp it up. You know, like for example, on scout defense, we got seven defensive starters out there. So when you have that and you have the athletes that we have, our, our offense is getting pushed. They're getting pushed in certain ways and in certain um, circumstances in the same way and defensively, you know, we have our whole starting offensive line out there. So um, the, you try to push them as much as you can, but uh, ultimately it comes down to those kids growing up and making plays and pressure moments because no matter how much we practice or even how much, even if we have pressure moments throughout the season, each moment brings a new opportunity for itself. So they're just going to have to grow up and make plays when it's time to make them. Yeah. And so now we'll talk a little bit about Guthrie. Obviously, sure. they've only lost one game this season. Yeah. Everyone wants to talk about their defense. They've been really good this year. Mm -hmm. uh, only given up, before the playoffs, I think they'd only given up 33 points yeah. uh, all season long. And they've had, I think, six or seven shutouts, something to that effect. So for your team going into this game, what do you expect to see from Guthrie that's going to maybe cause your team some difficulties? Mm -hmm. And then also, what matchups do you like for your team going against the Blue Jays? Well, first thing, you know, just looking at Guthrie, I just see the speed of their defense and how they tackle well. And they're tough. You know, they're tough as nails. They're, you know, those kids, they play hard. They believe in Coach Bigby. He's been there for 20, years, 20 or more years. Yeah. Um, they're just a hard-nosed, tough football team. Um, and they get after, you know, defensively. And then offensively, they're just as good. You know, people don't give their offense a lot of credit, but they're constantly scoring points. They run the ball well. They do a lot of different motions and shifts to kind of make you have to utilize communication. So they're just a tough team all around. And when you, anytime you go 10-1, and one, that kind of that's a testament of who you are and what your program stands for. Um, so we're excited about it. Um, you know, as far as matchups, you know, we got LaDainian, Rodney, Braden, um, River. We got some skilled guys that, regardless of who we were playing, I think we could just take advantage of some things, you know. Um, and then defensively, we got a pretty good defense ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, our defense flies around. Um, I think a lot of teams haven't seen our speed, you know, because it's, it's one thing to have speed and it's track speed. We got a, a pretty fast defense, you know. Rickland Holmes is a 4-5. Yep. Rodney is starting at Mike Backer. He's a 4-3. You got Aaron Carter. He runs a 4-6. Braylon's a 4-5. And LaDain's a 4-4. So when you have that type of speed, the thing I like about it, it makes up for mistakes because they're going to make mistakes to, on Friday. They're going right. um, to give up some plays. You know, I heard Coach Gundy say so in his press conference the other day. Um, when you're going against good teams, you're not going to stop them in all game. You know, right. you're going to stop people throughout the year. But in these games like this with, you know, two state champion caliber teams, they're going to make plays. We just have to minimize those big plays and put ourselves in a good situation to be successful. Yeah, and so to wrap this up, I, I want to talk about we're here at the stadium, Bob Cowsu Stadium. This is the last home game that you'll play this season, and then from there we'll go to neutral sites. Talk about the people that need to come to this game Friday night. Talk about why they need to be here, um, and talk about what they're going to get to see. I mean, this is, in my opinion, the biggest game in high school football this Friday night for the quarterfinals. Well, you know, these kids have been working hard, um, and this community has been working hard. The parents have been working hard, the, the, the staff, the administrators, everyone's been working hard. Anytime you go undefeated or anytime you have had the successful three years we have since I became the head coach, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different people that put their hard work and um, a lot of time into this. So I just think everybody can just come out and enjoy it. You know, they need to come out and enjoy these type of moments. Um, this is how you build tradition. This is how you continue to get the culture to continue to get to a level that you want it to be. Um, and, you know, this, it, these boys deserve it. The seniors deserve it. You know, you got kids like Braylon Dama who's have started over 30 games and you got Aaron Carter. It's a lot of kids that have put a lot of sweat, blood, and tears. So they just deserve to have the community here. They deserve it for it to be loud. Um, it's a hot, it needs to be a hostile environment. Um, and win or lose, they just need to be proud of them. You know, and I'm proud of them. Regardless of what happens Friday, like I told the boys today, I'm proud of what they accomplished. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of how they have handled themselves this year with the tragedy that happened in Choctaw and overcoming that. So I'm excited to see if they're going to show up. And, it, you know, even if they don't, um, they can catch it on the live stream. I think the live stream is something that has blessed so many families and friends. So regardless, if you can't show up, show up to the watch it on the live stream and just support us in that way. And I think either way, um, I think everybody would be happy with the results they have. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Coach, we sure appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Friday night, 7 o'clock.
It's Sorry. Fidelity Eagles versus the Guthrie Blue Jays. You've been watching a coach's timeout with the Oklahoma Sports Network.